So now as we continue our look at the different respiratory structures found within respiratory systems of organisms, let's begin by looking at one of the different respiratory structures that we see. One of them, a class of respiratory structures, will be known as body surfaces. So some organisms will use just the surfaces of their body in order to do the organismic respiration that we were talking about prior. When organisms use the body surfaces to breathe, this is going to be a situation in which organisms will say that use their body, so organisms that use their body surface as the actual respiratory structure. So they use their body surface as the specific respiratory structure capable of respiration. Now, what we're going to be basically thinking of when we think of organisms that do this are things like earthworms and amphibians. Now, body surfaces and their utilization as a respiratory structure classifies as the simplest type of respiratory structure. So we'll write that down. It's the simplest form of respiration utilizing any formal respiratory structure. Remember, a respiratory structure, however or however complex or uh, more sort of advanced than it, as it may be, in terms of its quantity and what it carries and what it really involves, respiratory structures all in, involve what we said prior. And those were things like allowing for gas exchange. Those were things like a moist environment, etc. In addition, we're going to notice that body surfaces are going to be found on actually relatively small organisms. Now, don't get me wrong, these are not the small aquatic organisms that were less than one millimeter thick. These are still going to be organisms that are larger than one millimeter thick and thus need bodies, need respiratory structures. But nonetheless, they're going to be relatively small as compared to the other organisms that use different respiratory structures. But because they're such small organisms, we'll also notice that these organisms will have a very high surface area to volume ratio. And that's going to help them combat the effects of having this very simple respiratory structure. In addition, any organism that utilizes body surfaces, their body surfaces, as a respiratory structure, usually has a quite low metabolic rate. Now, looking at metabolic rate tells you a lot about how an organism possibly breathes or does respiration. If you have a low metabolic rate, this means that you don't require lots of oxygen for your cell work and processes to occur. So we'll write that down. You don't require lots of oxygen, therefore you don't need lots of gas exchange for all the cell work that's being done within the body. That's what a low metabolic rate is, and it makes sense that in a simple respiratory structure found in relatively small organisms, they also are going to have a low metabolic rate. They just simply don't need that much oxygen to do what they need to do to survive. In addition, usually if we're looking, if we're looking at an organism that has or utilizes its body surface as a respiratory structure, it's usually, uh, if it is terrestrial, if it is on land, what we'll also notice is that um, they'll usually be near a very moist environment, at least. They'll always be close to the water. So we'll be um, in a moist environment. That's where they'll, they'll be living. So that's why when you think of earthworms or amphibians, those are classic two organisms that use body surfaces as a respiratory structure, where do amphibians live? Near the water, right? And where do earthworms live? In the soil. And soil is relatively moist because it absorbs all that water. In addition, what you also have to remember is that body surfaces aren't usually, most of the time, when we look at them in an organism, they may not be the only respiratory structure in that organism because the organisms that have body surfaces may also have um, gills and lungs as well. So that's something we've noticed or seen when we looked at amphibians. Amphibians, we remember, made that big jump to land um, because they gained this ability to breathe in on air, but they still needed a relatively moist environment and needed to go back to water in order to reproduce. That's why we notice that some organisms will still have gills and lungs and will utilize their body surfaces in addition to the gills and lungs that they already have for respiration. Overall, when we're looking at body surfaces, what we need to remember is the following. These are the sort of components that make up a body surface utilization for respiration. But what we have to remember is that this will actually not work in larger organisms. This will not work for larger and more active organisms. For larger, more active, that would mean a higher metabolic rate organisms.
This is simply because when you have bigger organisms that are more metabolically active, that have a higher metabolic rate, these bigger organisms are basically going to have a lot more distance that the gases that they exchange with their environment need to travel. So there's more distance for gases, more distance uh, for gases need to travel, more distance gases need to travel to reach the specific cell in need, whichever ones may be. So if there's a muscle that's found in this large organism, that's all the way at the bottom of the organism, it's more distance for that gas to be dissolved within the blood to reach the area at which it gets oxygenated and then finally reaches the cells all the way at the bottom of the organism in need. As a bigger organism has those type of problems, you're going to then, of course, not utilize body surfaces because body surfaces are only found in small organisms with a low metabolic rate. And therefore, body surfaces only work at sort of a, a small window of opportunity. That covers our look at body surfaces. Remember, examples of this would be earthworms and amphibians. Next, we're going to continue our look at respiratory structures by focusing on how gills work.